If you are a data analyst or want to become one, you should be able to do the following three things in R. First, calculate different summary statistics like mean, median for one continuous variable like the diamond prices. You should also be able to report the number of cases that these calculations are based on and produce more fancy summary statistics like the standard deviation or the 90% quantile. Second, you should be able to produce these summary statistics for different levels of a categorical variable like the average diamond price for good, premium or ideal cuts. And thirdly, produce one summary statistic like the average price for two different categories like the cut and the color of the diamond. So in summary, first, we will produce multiple summary statistics for one continuous variable, the diamond price, by using the summarize function. Then we will produce the exact same values, but now including a categorical variable, like the cut, by using the group by function in R. And thirdly, still using the same continuous variable, we will limit the analysis to one summary statistic, but now are able to produce this result for two categorical variables, like the cut and the color, by using the pivot wider function. And as a bonus, in the end, I will show you how to deal with missing data like NAs and one way to visualize the results by using a heat map. Welcome back to the Data Digest. Let's get started with the R code. So after loading the tidyverse package, you can investigate the diamond data set with the question mark or help function. And you will learn that you have almost 54,000 diamonds with different variables. Most importantly, the price and the weight, but we will mostly focus on the cut, color and clarity. Before I explain the summarize group by and pivot wider functions, here are some base R functions that help you to investigate the dataset. The dim function gives you the dimensions of the dataset, 53,940 rows with 10 columns or variables. The str function gives you the structure of your dataset, which currently is a tibble, which is very similar to a data frame. And it tells you that price and the weight come as integers on numerical variables and that for cut color and clarity you have ordered factors with different levels where one clarity is worse than another similarly one cut is worse than the next the head function gives you a preview of the first six rows but only for as many variables that fit into the screen when it's a tibble when it's a data frame it would continue and show you all the variables of the first six rows the view function opens a new tab where you could look at all 53,940 rows and you could even filter for premium cuts and only look at those and sort the clarity or color. So quite a useful tool for data exploration. And the summary function gives you the summary statistics for continuous variables, so min, median, max and the different quartiles. And it also provides count data for the categorical variables. So it tells you that you have almost 5,000 diamonds with a good cut, but over 20,000 with ideal cuts and the different counts for color and clarity as well. Now for the first task, as I said, for the continuous variable, we are going to use the prices of the diamonds data set. And you can visualize those with a geom histogram. And because we have over 50,000 observations, we can use a lot of bins to show the details of the distribution. And as a quick tip, if you plot something and you're interested in some of the values, you can make it interactive. After loading the plotly package, you can use the ggplotly function on your last value, which is this plot. And then you get an interactive chart. And when you zoom into it a little, you can quickly learn that over 4,000 observations have a price of approximately $560. The mode of over 5,000 is at 750 and then the third most common price value is just above 900 for over 4000 observations and then you have a right skewed distribution where higher prices become less and less likely if you want to produce results or summary statistics on a specific variable you can pipe the data set into the summarize function and then produce the minimal price or the medium price and so forth and what this does is producing exactly these results in these special quotes, which reflect the text of what you entered as a function. But a better way to do it is to name your results specifically by assigning the min price function to a value called min, for example. Or you could call it minimum and maximum. And now you can also use quantile function with the probability 0.9. And now you can see that where before 
without labeling it specifically towards a result variable. You get the name of the function. Now it uses the name you assigned it to and you get same value for minimum and also now maximum and the standard deviation. And the end function you can always use to count the number of variables and here it breaks off again with the quantile result but when you use the view last value again you can see the, the value for the 90% quantile so only 10% of the data has a price higher than 9821. I know that there is a summary function that you can use on the diamond price variable which always gives you the min max, median, mean and first and third quartile but with the summarize function you can be a, a lot more specific on what exactly you want to produce as results. Now I want to to move on to producing these results for categorical variables or their different levels. And first you can use the count function to see how many observations you have for the different levels. And here cut, color or clarity would all be good variables to investigate because they have a lot of observations within each level to produce average prices for. If you don't want to use tidyverse functions, you can also do the table. So the table function for diamonds cut gives you the same values as the count function. But just as a reminder, the count function comes with a thought function argument. And if you set that to true, it will thought the results by increasing values. And now the only thing that changes if we calculate these summary statistics for the price, if we want to produce them for the different cut levels, we just have to insert a group by. So within the pipeline data sets to result, we include the group by function for cut. And now we'll calculate the min, median, mean, max, all the different levels. And it provides you with the number of observations giving the end function. Now you can see that the minimum and maximum prices are all fairly similar, but that the average price for premium cut and for fair cut seem to stand out a little bit. If you want to investigate more than one categorical variable, you have to limit the number of results variables. So you can produce the average price for cut and color. So the table function used on two categorical variables gives you the number of observations within each subgroup. So now we have 163 fair cut diamonds with the color D and 2093 ideal cut diamonds with the color I. This is the use of the base R function. If you prefer the piping framework from dplyr or tidyverse, you can pipe the data set into the select function, select two variables and then follow up with a table. And you can also continue the piping into as data frame matrix and view. And then you have a nice results table of your database. You can also achieve that by using the count function now for two variables cut and color and it gives you the number of cases you would have within each combination of these groups and if you follow this up with the pivot wider function you can space it out again by taking the names from one of these two categories like color and the values from the end column and then it produces cut for rows and color for columns the number of observations you have. And we will use a similar approach in visualizing the results. As I said, we now focus only on the mean price now, but for two categorical variables. So first we only group by cut and now we include color and we can produce the average prices each of the subgroups we have. And we can space them out again by select one of the variables for the columns and keep the other one as rows. So now color will be spread out similarly to as we did here. And the values now will come from mean. And this is how you can produce average price, different combinations of two categories. If you're more interested in clarity than color, just change the variable and you get the results now for cut and clarity. Now it is important that you know how to deal with missing data or NAs. To give an example, I simply copy the diamonds data set into a new object called diamonds NA, which is currently the exact same. And what I'm going to do is sample 2500 rows randomly from this vector, which has the numbers 1, 2, 4394, which is the number of rows the data set has. And when I sample roughly 2% of the data set, I get random numbers that will represent the rows into which I'm going to insert NAs. And one way to do that is to pick the price column and use square brackets and now 2500 random values of the price will be assigned NA. So when I look into diamond NA price, I see random NAs at different positions. We can filter the data set 
for NAs and count the different levels of cut to see that we introduced NAs with a good distribution for the different levels. And now if you would calculate summary statistics for a data set that contains NAs, you will get a lot of NAs because missing data tells R that it doesn't know what the actual minimum or average is. Some of the values are missing. The N function, however, and that's something that's important, will simply count the number of levels you have within cut regardless of whether the associated data of price is missing or is there. Now luckily each of the functions min, median and max comes with a function argument called na.rm which stands for na removal and if you set that to true it will calculate the mean and max on the prices that are not na. It removes all the na values and it can produce a mean and a max but now we don't know on how many observations these calculations were based on and there are now different ways to get to the actual numbers. One is for example to omit all the NAs and count the length. So what remains as observations if I remove them? How long is my vector? You can also use the isNA function to identify the NA values and sum them up. And with the exclamation mark, you get the opposite. This turns all the trues into false and now you would count up the not NA values. So now I pipe these results into the view function and you can see that the N that was produced by the N function counts all the variables for the different cut levels. The big N was produced by the length NA omit function and it should be the same as the is not NA. Let's check that. It's the same. 1549 and 1549 and the is an a sum is the numbers of missing values so if you add these two up you get to the original number but notice that the average price for fair cut diamonds is based on these 1549 and not on the total because we have some missing values lastly i want to quickly show you a way how you can visualize your results and i will link to a video where i discussed the creation of heat maps in R with more detail by using the geom tile function. First we calculate the average price for different cuts and clarity and now we don't have to convert it into a wider data frame because ggplot wants to have the data in a long format with different columns for cut clarity and price. So now I pipe this result into the ggplot function and for mapping I use the aesthetics cut on the x-axis and clarity on the y-axis and for the color filling I will use the mean price and later I'm going to label it also with the mean price but rounded to whole dollars and now you only have to add a geom geom tile here with color for the frame being gray so fill and color are different from one another fill is the actual filling which will be based on the price and gray is the color outside of the tiles you can also set those to white or black and now you can follow up with a scale fill continuous where the default gradient is changed to a color you choose for low and high points like orange and dark green and with name within this function you can give your gradient legend a title i choose diamond price with a backslash n for line break. You can additionally add the geom text because we used labeling information in the aesthetics mapping of the ggplot function and with color equals white you will add the average price into these heat maps. And then there are two functions you could use to manipulate the x and the y axis. With scale y discrete limits equals reverse you would switch the order of the y axis levels. I'm not going to do that because the clarity is already worse on the bottom and best at the top. But I want to move the scale x discrete labels of the x-axis to the position top. And now it's a bit easier to read that the cut goes from fair to ideal, from left to right. And now color-wise it's really easy to find the lowest and the highest prices. As always I hope you found this tutorial useful and will use it in your own analysis. Until next time here at the Data Digest.